Contouring is something I, then I usually make a little bit of a line. The easiest way to hide this little flap. Hi guys, so in today's video I'm going to talk about contouring. A lot of you ask me pretty often about little trip trips and tricks, little tips and tricks that I can share with you about makeup, beauty, skincare in general and I thought that I should do a little how-to series um, on just sort of guiding you on how I do certain things, certain techniques. Contouring is something I started out with sort of just doing it to kind of finish the look up a little more and ever since I've gained a little bit of weight on my face over the last year, I feel like I need to contour. If you're comfortable without going for contouring, that's absolutely fine. I like to contour. It's genuinely a matter of choice. There are no rules to this per se um, but today I'm gonna show you guys how I contour my face you guys have seen some very obvious differences with and without makeup on my face I'm usually never almost wearing makeup on my Instagram stories but today I'm wearing almost full coverage makeup I have very little mascara on I'm wearing Meher by Mac on my lips because I know some of you always ask me down below in the comment section what lip shade it is that I'm wearing so I'm trying to get that out of the way before we go into the video now coming to the contouring products I'm going to use today um, I have one stick contour with me which is sort of equivalent to the way a cream contour would work now usually when you see a lot of these concealer palettes from MAC or NYX they come with multiple options on concealers and also come with one really nice dark contour shade which should work really well whether you're using a cream that requires a brush format or something like this which is the Fenty contour um, it's going to give you a similar effect because ultimately it's a crayon and it's not a powder you guys have seen me use this particular contour stick in my Fenty exclusive video. If you haven't seen that video already, I will add the link to it down below as well as up here. Um, but apart from this, what I'm going to be using is my NYX contour palette. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that this is a palette I absolutely swear by. It's from the drugstore range. It's pretty inexpensive and frankly, it does a phenomenal, phenomenal job. So while I have various other contouring products from different brands, they either fall under under the cream category which is what this would sort of belong to the family of or the powder category which is what this product would belong to the family of so i've picked my favorites and uh, i'm gonna go right in i've also got two brushes over here with me both are stippling brushes one is a little more kabuki with its finish um it's got an angle which is great for your jaw or when you're just looking for a little more control and precision over your blending while contouring and this one is sort of like a mini face stippling brush you can use this for foundation you can use this for concealer i use this for bronzer and sometimes for my contouring so i'm just going to decide which one i want to use both of these brushes are from morphe this angled one over here is an m571 and this one here is an m36 you guys have hopefully seen my morphe haul video again if you haven't seen it i will add the link to it down below as well as up here so without further ado let me dive right in now typically um, um, on a regular basis, I don't like to necessarily do cream and then powder. That's only when I'm looking for like extreme photo shoot steps. Um, so what I'm probably going to do today is do one side with my cream stick and one side powder. And then we'll take a call. If they look the same, then great. Um, I was sort of confused between doing both or doing just sort of one and one. But I realized that on a regular basis, so many of you might just choose to do any one. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, let's dive right in and get to it. Okay, so I've got my Fenty matchsticks. This is in the shade Mocha. What I'm going to do is start do my right side with this particular product. So like, let's draw an imaginary line on my face. The right side is cream, the left side is powder. So when you're contouring your face, the first step I'm going to ask you to do is Suck it in. Become like a fish face so you can actually see where your jaw is, which is essentially what you're looking to accentuate. Uh, you're looking usually to create a shadow. Contouring essentially is you creating a shadow over here, which sort of gives your face more shape, more definition, sort of slims down your face. It sharpens it out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have zero contour on me right now but I've been told this by a lot of makeup artists that I sort of have a natural line on both sides. I know I do but I like to accentuate it further. So what I'm going to do is turn this way. This is the space and I'm going to hope that I do it correctly because I'm looking somewhere else but suck it in and you see this line that's forming here. 
I've just followed it up. If you feel like you have more weight on you that you would like to specifically conceal, if that's something that you would like to do, then you can drag your line a little further or even take it a little more up. But for me, I feel like this is fine. Then I usually make a little bit of a line here, just below where the earlobe is, just starting from here below the earlobe and sort of going into your jaw. Now, this is something that you can completely skip as well if you don't really want to or find the need to. I like to. I feel like the look is more bang on with it being full coverage makeup if you have your contour game in place. So I'm just gonna make sure my contour stick is going all the way. This is what it looks like from down under in case that helps. And um, what I'm gonna do is take my Morphe brush and just sort of blend it. Now when you're blending it, you can move it in circular motions. I would avoid moving it in downward motions unless of course it's near your jawline to just sort of make sure your skin stays healthy. These are mistakes I sometimes make as well. I am guilty of those shortcuts as well, but I'm gonna try and avoid it as much as I can and I would recommend the same to you. Soft strokes going upward usually work. If you want to go round, great, but I don't think you'll be able to do that very easily with an angled brush like this one. So if I was to break it up into steps, step one would be identifying the space. Step two would be the application. Step three would be blending. I should have said that before, but you get where I'm coming from. Can you already see the difference between both my sides visibly? This is what contouring does to your face to your body depending on where you're contouring if you want to give your face an extra 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 chiseled look you can always drag your line a little more up that would really 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 make your face look narrow is usually people who either have a lot of weight or have really broad faces that prefer to do that um, to keep it looking natural i just like to follow my natural line but of course if you're looking to create a certain very specific look you can manipulate your lines I'm done with the blending on this side, so I hope you can instantly see the difference between my right side and my left side. My right side has the Fenty product on it and my left side has nothing on it. So if you want to sort of jump directly to a more finished, uh, to a more almost airbrush look sort of, you can skip the cream and just do powder. Keep in mind that if you have dry skin, the powder might work depending on the kind of base you're giving it. There are many products in the market now. For example, the Maybelline uh, Contour Primer is one that could really help keep your contour in place. What I'm going to do now on this side is pick up my brush. I have this one right here, the stippling brush. And um, I'm going to take just a little bit of the NYX product on my brush, very little. And I'm gonna do just a powder finish on this side so you can compare the difference. Again, I'm starting off with a line of sorts. Powders are usually easier to go in circular motion with, but it completely is your call which way you choose to move your, your brush around. Remember that there aren't really too many rules. Um, also, a lot of times I get questions about what if you forget to contour and would, can you contour right at the end? Now, for example, today's makeup look is completely done. The only thing I didn't do was contour, which is for this video. So I'm still going in and adding the contour. It doesn't mean that just because you've done your blush and you've done your highlight, you can't contour. Of course, ideally, if you're starting from your base, set it in, keep it there because when you're doing your setting mist, your contour is going to be there and all of that. But it's not like you can't do it later. Makeup doesn't come with as many rules as you might assume. You know what I mean? You can play around. You can use a lipstick as a blusher many times because if you don't have the right shade or if you're traveling and you're sort of, you know, sort of multi-purposing all your products, these are hacks that you will learn to love and will learn to find as and when you play with your makeup. Okay, so if you notice, um, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm personally so much more 
comfortable with a powder finish because I feel like powders are easier to move around. Having said that, a good cream base followed up by your powder is the ultimate finish. It's the super pro thing to do. Now, if you compare the two sides of my face, I feel like there's a little more sharpness here, whereas there's a slightly lesser sharpness on this side. So if I want to even it out, I can either just go in with the powder or I can stay true to what product goes on what side. I'm just going to add a little more contour, say here very little because it is going to blend and I do want the same finish deepen this up a little bit so it matches the other side okay now that I feel like I have my contours matched despite this crazy frizzy hair day I'm having um what I'm gonna do is okay I'm gonna do something that some of you might relate to when you look down do you see this? It doesn't really qualify for a double chin. God, I hope not. <laughs> but um, the easiest way to hide this little flap that you get is with product. So I'm just going to take a little more. Now I'm just going in with powder. And cutting it in. I'm just blending it in. Remember to not go here because otherwise your face will be a different color and your neck will be a different color. It just has to be for the shadow effect. There you go. Do you see the difference? There's a definite difference between um, the way things show. More so on camera, I'm sure. So there you have it. That's how simple it is to contour. A lot of people like to contour on their forehead as well. Uh, that's usually to try and make your face look smaller. The struggle in my life is that I have a small face but a ginormous forehead. But when I contour it, I feel like my face looks even smaller. So I usually like to let it be. I only very rarely contour my forehead, which I will not do now. Um, remember that you need to identify your contour shades. You don't have to be too dark. Make sure you pick the right kind of palette for yourself. I will, of course, add the details of my products down below in the, in the description section like I always do. Um, but you can always finish this up with a little bit of bronzer if that's the way you want to look at it. If you don't want to go for bronzer, just blend it all in with a little bit of blush. And then, of course, highlight because... Highlight is bay. Um, so yeah, I hope I've answered all your questions. Keep in mind that whether you're opting for a powder or a creamy finish, it's completely your call. You don't have to play by all the rules. And of course, always be open to experimenting. If you have any specific questions, let me know what they are down below in the comment section because I'm always reading those comments and I'm trying my best to respond to everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this contoury video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. And as I always say, subscribe. I'm going to see you guys in the next video. I love you. Mwah.